no, no. Aleluya. <laughs> Welcome everyone to Tuesday Night Live. <laughs> the word of God is worth the drive. Oh, glory. What a wonderful time and season. Amen. We're seeing things happening. They be happening. <laughs> well, yeah. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Hallelujah. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of Life. The breath of what? Life. And man became a living being. That's what you call a new awakening. <laughs> and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For Adam, you got to understand that this was all a new awakening. Not only was he awakened to a life, then he was awakened to a place. He was awakened to someone who made him. He was awakened to sight. He was awakened to taste. Everything to him was a new awakening. Everything. See, there's a place where you and I become awakened. And then we go to the next process of a new awakening. Every day in our life should be an area of not just an awaken, but a new awakening. And we look for that new awakening. There are many things that God tries to bring to me and you through the new awakening. It's almost like, you know, if you go up to a stairs and you open a door and, and in this new room that you've never gone before was filled all, with all associated unknown tools and objects and furnishings and what you're doing is you're waiting for instructions on in how to operate them. Those are new awakenings. To those that read instructions. Some of us are just waiting on God to tell us. <laughs> but there are those who read the instructions. And if you don't understand the instructions that you're reading, you better wait for God to tell you. <laughs> now, let's go a little further. In verse 10. Now a river, come on, read it with me, went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it parted and became four river heads. The name of the first is Pisan, and it is the one which skirts the whole land of Havala, and there and where there is gold. Now, so each river had associated with an object or carrying something special. Verse 12, and the gold of the land is good, but delium and the onyx stone are there. And the same name of the second river is Gahan. It is the one which goes around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Hedekal. 
and it is the one which goes toward the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. He was awakened to labor. Actually, what he was awakened to was authority. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Well, here was two other awakenings. First of all, submission. And the second one is loss, death. See, he, he didn't understand what death was. But he understood what loss was. To be removed from everything that God gave him was called loss. That was known as death. Everybody okay? Praise God. In verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a helper comparable to him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. So Adam was, got a new awakening to animals. And here was the authority that was given to Adam and a responsibility to not only upkeep the garden, but he was going to name the animals. All of these things were new awakenings. In verse 20, so Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. Now you got to remember, this was a new awakening. Adam had not slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is a new awakening. Probably freaked out at first. Ah! Who are you? That's why God had to put him asleep. And Adam said, this is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Wow. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Now you got to remember, Adam's mother and father was God. This is a whole new awakening to Adam. And they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. I mean, there's so many parallels in this of a new awakening. And, and there are parallels in this of a new awakening when you are born again. When you are born again in the Spirit, there's an awakening. Then when you're baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a new awakening. Is everybody with me? And in this new awakening, you begin to get new eyes and everything changes in your life. Everything. Now the whole thing is to maintain that place where you have a new awakening. You are looking for a new awakening all the time. One of the things is you are, your spirit is awakened over and over and over because one of the things the enemy wants to do is put you to sleep. He wants to cause you to compromise, become complacent, lazy, comfortable. And God is trying to keep us strong in the power of his might and not our own. He's always trying to, again, keep us connected to his presence, his power, his truth, his love trying to keep us connected. The enemy's always trying to disconnect us. 
In Genesis chapter 3, in verse 1, now the serpent was more... to the field which the Lord God had made. Here was a new awakening. Evil, wicked, cunning. Some believers still aren't awakened to this yet. In fact, some of them are still not awakened to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why they can't see the way they're supposed to see. They're bound by the letter, and they can't even interpret the letter. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you what? Die. So we know that the Lord never warns us once. Amen. He warns us multiple times, don't do that, don't do that, don't touch that, don't do that, don't do that, smack, don't do that. Dummy. Hallelujah. Then the serpent said to the woman, you sh will not surely die. Well, he lied to her. She didn't get that awakening until she obeyed him. That she'd been lied to. Does everybody understand that? So God is trying to prepare us ahead of time that the devil is a liar and the father of lies and their demonic forces of the unseen realm. Because what happened here again, because she cooperated with what the enemy said, her awakening became asleep. She lost it. And then she convinced her husband and he lost it. They both became asleep. No longer connected to the presence of God. Could no longer stay in the garden of God. And he had to remove them from it because they couldn't access the eternal tree of life. Because he promised them that they would die. But thank God for Jesus because everything that was lost in the Garden of Eden was restored in the Garden of Gethsemane. Everything. Why? So that you and I could be awakened again. And Luke chapter 9. Hallelujah. So she had, they had a new awakening of deception, of lies, of manipulation, even betrayal. A baby, when it is brought into the world and begins to speak, run, maybe crawl and grabbing things, doesn't know what hot is yet, doesn't know what danger is yet. But the first awakening he gets is being scolded or corrected. Don't touch that. That will hurt you. They don't get it. They're going to eventually touch it when you're not looking. Then they're going to come crying. And you know what happened? They just got an awakening. <laughs> Hello. Sometimes an awakening has to come and they painful way. Amen? <laughs> yes, how stupid can we be and still breathe sometimes? Amen? Hallelujah. Luke 9 and verse 28. However that awakening is going to come, God wants us to keep us awake. Does everybody get it? He doesn't want us to fall asleep. So there is a new awakening always awaiting for me and you. Always. Now you can refuse it. You can refuse to go forward and step back. See, you can either go forward or be steadfast 
But once you begin to go back, you begin to lose things. The enemy starts stealing. The one of the first things he begins to steal again is your identity. You will lose who you are. And then you don't fight for who he is. Because only when you maintain who you are do you fight for who he is. Luke 9, 28. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Now it came to pass about eight days after these sayings that Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistering. And behold, two men talked with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in the glory and spoke of his decease when he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and those with him were very, were heavy what? With sleep. They were what? Heavy was, come on, think about this. You don't think the enemy got to him, them, those guys? Here is the Lord transfiguring in front of them, and these guys are sleeping. Because they are not strong in the spirit yet. Even though God was fulfilling what he promised. And you have Elijah and Moses show up. And these guys are sleeping. They were heavy asleep. Man, they were gone. They were probably dreaming about fishing. And whatever else. <laughs> In verse 32. But Peter and those with him were very were heavy with sleep. And when they were what? Fully awake. Not when they were awake, but when they were what? Fully awake. They saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. Does everybody understand that? That's called a new awakening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> new awakening. Now let's go a little further. Then it happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. Let me share with you, every new awakening comes by a revelation of hearing God. When a voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one those, in those days any of the things that they had seen. <laughs> I don't know if anybody would believe them, actually, you know. They probably thought they were nuts. But again, in this, they were fully awake. When that fully awakeness comes, we see the glory, the essence. What is the glory? It is the essence of the Christ character. It is the ex essence of the Christ creator. So in this, they got such revelation of creator and character in the new awakening. Uh, uh, yeah, new awakening. The fear of the Lord came. There was a reverence, honor, and respect. And the voice of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, and the presence of the Lord, they were awakened to. In Psalm 42. New awakenings. I believe that we have entered a time where God is unfolding so many things and releasing so many areas that for you and I as believers, unless you're disconnected, it's impossible not to have new awakenings. It's just impossible. 
where you are seeing things different. You are understanding things different. There's more, there's more wisdom. There's other things that are going on. There's so much going on. And it's known about new awakenings of yourself. In fact, the awakening of yourself is no longer. You are distant from yourself now. In Psalm 42, in verse 6, let's speak it. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon and from the hill of Mazar. Deep calls on to deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, a prayer to the God of my life. In this deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling for new awakenings. The deepness of God is calling for new awakenings. He's saying, come deeper with me. In other words, the waterfalls. And I think we've talked about some of this before. You can stand in front of a waterfalls and get feel the splash. In fact, you can admire the waterfalls and see how beautiful it is going into the pond or whatever. But it's not until you get into the waterfalls that you get saturated. There's a difference. See, so many people are so admiring the waterfalls and just feeling the splash of it, it's like feeling the splash of God's presence instead of getting saturated with God's presence. This is where you connect. You don't connect without coming to the end of yourself and worship. It's like taking a bus and getting off the stop before your destination. Does everybody get it? So many people get off the bus and never make it to where they're actually supposed to be. And you, people do this in worship. They do it in worship. They worship and then quit. And they really never connect. They don't get into the falls. They sense the splash and they get a, give up. Oh, I got touched. No, you got sprinkled. Or maybe it just came off of somebody else that was closer to the falls. <laughs> but people give up. We have a song that says that everything changes when you dance with all of your might. That's warfare. See, people don't understand spiritual warfare. Warfare is more than just praying. It's dancing. It's worshiping. What's a, you, listen, if your prayers are not anointed, what good is it? Then it's nothing but seed. And you're not going to throw, look at, you're going to throw the, you throw seed at the devil, he's going to plant his own garden. You, but when the word of God is anointed by the spirit of God, it becomes the sword of God. It becomes different. Is everybody okay? Oh, Glory. Psalm, did we do that? Yes, Psalm 42. All right. Deep is calling for new awakenings. Deep calls on to deep. And John 4. New awakenings. You don't think Donald Trump had a new awakening? Whew, you bet. Had a tremendous new awakening. You know, there's a new awakening that you reach when you realize you can't do it yourself. That's a good awakening. I just can't do this. Praise God. I get, we get so many calls of people, you know. Man, I've been, I've, I'm, I've been using drugs. I'm, my, my wife, my husband, whatever, threw me out, this, that, whatever. I've lost everything. I don't know what to do. Praise God, you're a great candidate. 
What do you mean I'm a good candidate? Yes. Yes, you're a very good candidate. Why? Because you can't get any lower. <laughs> Where did I say to go, John, for? So that means you got to get up. You know, there's a saying, you got to get down to get up. Amen? Praise God. Sometimes you need to get down all over again because you got up on the wrong side. It's called pride. Hello. John 4, verse 5. Now a certain man was, John 4, verse 5. Glory. So Jesus came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near the plot of the ground of that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jacob's well. Now Jacob had some powerful revelations. Jacob had a very powerful awakening. In fact, he even wrestled with God. Amen? This is where dad played Godfather. He finally broke his leg. Hello. Now, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. And a woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Boy, did he set her up. You don't think God set you up too? Oh, he does. He does. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Now, I checked this out. They went to buy food, and Jesus could have just said, food. And it was there. He could have took a rock and turned it into bread. He could have done anything. But he sent his disciples away. Is everybody all right? And verse 9. Then the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now, I want you to know to realize something now that Jacob's well was actually called the prophetic well. It is a prophetic well. Then a woman said to him, Sir, you are, have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Deep calls on to deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into what? Ever, in other words, there will be a connection. Does everybody see this? Then you're getting connected by what? Drinking of this water. And how you drink of this water? By going all the way and connecting worship. Which then releases what? Multiple things, including a new awakening. You don't think this woman had a new awakening? Watch what happens to her. Oh, hallelujah. So the woman said to her, said to Jesus, Well, sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw anymore. Man, she was willing to give it all up. Give me some of this stuff, then I don't have to deal with this. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and, and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You have well said I have no husband. In fact... For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now are shacked up with is not even your husband, and you're living in fornication. And that you spoke truly. 
The woman said to Jesus, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. <laughs> That's why we call this the prophetic well. Because <laughs> Jesus read her dirty laundry. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. So he's nullifying both locations that have been sanctioned to just do worship. And he's saying, look, there's going to be a time where there's going to be not just that. In verse 22, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to what? Worship Him. See, some people don't understand how many times God passes them by. He knows the need, but they refuse to press through and connect. And he passes them by. Then they go back in their own strength. They don't get a new awakenings. Revelation is very few. And they rely on the letter and not on the spirit. They become dull of hearing, dull of seeing, and hard-hearted. And they become survivalists instead of those surrender. It's a terrible life to live as, and call yourself a Christian. Terrible. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and in what? Truth. How many know that you can get healed in God's presence? The greatest healing for me and you is emotional healing. Because once the inner healing comes, the outer healing comes. If the inner healing hasn't come yet, the outer healing isn't. It starts inside to out. Is everybody okay? Then a woman said to Jesus, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he'll tell us all of these things that you're telling me. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. After she passed out, he probably threw some water on her and sent her on her way. Amen. This is known as the well of Jacob. It is a prophetic well. These are places of the deep things of God awaiting for me and you. But unless you're willing to press through and truly connect, you don't get them. That is the price for each and every one of us. We get so caught up in everything else. That we don't put him first. We don't just put his presence first. He says, those who will seek me with all of their might and all of their heart and all of their mind will find me. That's that. That's that. It's not just about gathering together. We can gather together and you can never connect. You got to worship like how you used to scream when you used to watch that pigskin thing go down the road or down the... Uh, down the basketball court or down the football field. People worship the pigskin. Boy, they scream, yeah, that's my team. And then they come into church, they come into fellowship, they worship, and then they quit. It's like the game's over. Or they forfeited. Don't forfeit your connection. Don't forfeit it. Fight all the way through. Deny yourself. Somebody wants to talk to you? Stick. No. If that doesn't work, take your sock off. <laughs> Don't talk to me in worship. Does everybody get it? Let them connect. Be the example, not the stumbling block. Worship till you drop. Connect. Because without connect, there's no contact. And it takes contact to turn the propeller for a plane to fly. Amen? That's why they say contact. 1 Corinthians 2.
Hallelujah. Don't you get kind of like a, 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 a new awakening, a fresh revelation, you know, when, when all of a sudden you know God just did something? Whoa! Yeah! Cool! Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor heard nor have entered the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Love them. He says they not enter them. Even though they say they can see, but they can't see. Even though they say they can hear, they can't hear. Because it's not entered them. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. Spirit. Those who worship me must worship me in spirit and truth. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the what? The what? Deep things of God. Deep, deep things of God. You know, when people go treasure hunting, they're always going deep into something, whether they're digging for something or they're going in the ocean and going deep for something. It's called treasure hunting. They're looking for something valuable. Well, when you and I, we should go treasure hunting in God's presence because there's something much more valuable than just gold or silver. There's life. There's life revelations. There's new awakenings. All kinds of wonderful things. Amen? Psalm 17. New happenings. He tries to give you a false promise. He tries to interpret the voice of God. He knows that if you're not connected, that he can deceive real easy. Psalm 17, verse 6. I'll speak it. I have called upon you, for you will hear me. Oh God, incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. Oh, you who save those who what? Trust in you from those who rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me and from my deadly enemies who surround me. Wow. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crouching down to the earth. As a lion is eager to tear his prey, and a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down. Deliver my life from the wicked from your sword, with your sword. With your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life, oh, and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possession for their babes. But as for me, I will see your face in righteousness, and I shall be satisfied when I wake in your likeness. When I wake in your likeness. New awakenings bring more of his likeness. New awakenings bring more of his likeness. Because every awaken reveals more of him. More of him. More of him. Now you may have revelation of something. Does everybody understand? You may have a revelation of something that's going on. But when there's an, a new awakening, the awakening is of God Almighty, of who he is, and the essence of him and his life as a creator, savior, king, lord, and father. There's a difference. Ephesians chapter 5.
But remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He knows when you take your foot off the pedal and put it on the brakes. You know why? He sees the red lights come on in the back. Oh. He sees those brake lights come on. Yes. There's one. Boop, boop, boop on the radar. Real loud. Roar. Ephesians 5.14. Let's speak it. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Does light bring blindness or sight? Sight. So when you see something differently, doesn't a new awakening bring sight? And all of a sudden, Lord, you're so awesome. You're so cool. Why? Because I just had awakening of his essence. You wanted a new awakening of his essence. Again, revelations are great. They keep the restraints. Illuminations of God's word is great, but there's a difference and a new awakening of his essence. Totally different. Remember Paul said, man, even though I have revelations and all kinds of stuff, but everything to him was lost for the character of Christ. What was he talking about? New awakenings. The essence of who Christ is, is everything and holder of everything. Again, without that awakening, you lose sight of who you are. Verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be what? What does he always go back to? Connecting to God's presence, the deep presence of God. Do not be drunk with wine, which is in dissipation, but be what? Filled with the Holy Spirit, because deep is calling on to deep, and deep is calling on to new awakenings. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another in the fear and reverence of honor of God Almighty. Awake to a new, to a new awakening by drinking from the river of life and prophetic wells. River of life and prophetic wells. Oh, remember, refreshing your long-term vision is refreshing your commissioned purpose. I'm going to say this again. Remember that refreshing your long-term vision, we talked about freshing, refreshing your vision, a new freshing of your vision. That's your long-term vision. You have short-term visions that will, but there's a long-term vision God gives us. Some people have never gotten it yet because they've never been faithful enough. He can't give them a long-term vision because they ain't faithful with a short-term vision. Remember, your long-term visions is refreshing in when you're, in other words, your vision is always associated with your commissioned purpose. Vision is associated with your commissioned purpose. That's why God gives vision. John 7. So every new awakening will support your vision and your commissioned purpose. John 7. You may not all understand this now. Pray in the Spirit. Amen. Eat it, eat it, eat it till it becomes understood. <laughs> If you eat it enough, you'll get a new awakening. Praise God. John 7, 37. You're getting meat in a bottle. 
So it takes, sometimes it takes a little bit to digest. John 7, 37. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not glorified. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly, this is a what? Prophet. He was talking about drinking. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that Christ comes from the seed of David and from the town of Bethlehem where David was? Well, if they would have followed Jesus, they would have found out he was him. So there was a division among the people because of him. The prophetic well is Christ. The prophetic well is Christ. Remember, he was trying to convince the woman, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the drink that releases new awakenings. I am the prophetic well. What the prophetic well is Christ Jesus bringing new awakenings of reality. Many are dying of thirst and don't even know it. Did you ever get dehydrated and not know it? The next thing you know, you got a headache or you're weak or whatever. And you're just out there busy doing whatever. You could be out in the heat. You could be working out, playing sports. Next thing you're dehydrated and you don't even know it. Until sometimes people black out because they're dehydrated or something happens. But not until you're finally so dehydrated do you realize it. And that's how it is in the spirit. There are many believers that are <laughs> dehydrated. Very dehydrated. And they don't even know it. And they're shriveling up and drying up. They're not walking in peace, joy, and righteousness. They're not being connected. They don't have the power to overcome. They let every thought and every emotion dictate and how they feel. What they do. And dictate their decisions. They levy that every incident in their life. Because the enemy loves to set up incidences in an individual's life like that. Because he gets fed. And his friends get fed. Let's up all these people, all these demonic forces, off of one person till that person is so shriveled up that they kill them. No good, no more. Many individuals are dehydrated in the kingdom. Many. Is everybody okay? They're dying of thirst and don't even know it. Not willing to dip down or humble themselves and press in and drink from the river. Let's go to Psalm 46. That's why we have the Friday night anointing service. So you can drink. That's what it's about. Drink. But don't quit. Drink. Drink of the river of awakening. Now, Nate, that's good exercise. Some people come to a Friday night and they, they'll, you know, they'll do a couple rounds and then they're done. Then they wonder why nothing happens to them. <laughs> they're usually the ones that first ones that sit down. No, no revelation that he's there, because when he's there, whoosh, should be a reverence. Psalm 46, let's do it all. God is our refuge and strength, a very presence of help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed 
and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is what? With us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Do you understand the reverence and to the well again? To the deep calls on to deep. Everything's about that. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. All river, all of the river of life <laughs> causes new awakenings. Jacob's well. Because the Lord is with us. The Lord is not, a, look at, the word of God is not alive unless it's moved upon by the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's not alive. Bringing new awakenings of new revelations and illuminations and manifestations and then regeneration. See, you and I are always should be in the process of regeneration. There's a regeneration going on all the time. But if we're not getting new awakenings, how can a regeneration continue? Again, it's like when a person stops drinking water. You can stop eating food and die, and not die, but you stop drinking water and you will die. Amen? Isaiah 43. You have not because you ask not. So what do you do? Lord, grant me new awakenings today. You have a right to ask for a new awakening if you worshiped him with all of your heart. He will never deny you. Never. But when you go halfway, you get half. That's the price. Isaiah 43, 16. Let's speak it together. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? A new thing. Now it shall bring spirit spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, and what? Rivers in the desert. Do you see the new happenings are always connected to a river? Snap. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to start at verse 18 again. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the old things. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches. Because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To who? To give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for who? Myself. They shall declare my praise. This people I have formed for myself. Oh, there is a people of God formed for himself. There's a difference between warrior and citizen. There's a difference between priest and you can be all of them. That's what the word says. Many are called, but few are what? Chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. 2 Corinthians 5.
Salvation is a wonderful miracle. That's the first awakening. But then there's new awakenings after that. Never be satisfied with salvation. And then never be satisfied with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's more. In verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? A new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself and not imputing their trespasses to them. And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were what? Pleading through us. We employ you as on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. God, before he has made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Listen, we bring a new awakening to others. When, see, you can't give something you don't have. And we're seeing a new awakening right now globally. There is a new awakening globally. There's a new awakening of evil. There's a new awakening of righteousness. There's a new awakening of everything in a global state of being. If there wasn't a new awakening right now, there's a new awakening of creator. There are revivals that are breaking out globally in places that you wouldn't even know and consider. This whole thing with North Korea is not by accident. It's a sign. It's a sign. It's a ripple effect. Why? Because judgment not only began in the house of God, but it's in globally. And judgment is just an area of exposure before God's wrath. In other words, change your ways or you're going to get destroyed. That was real simple for North Korea. <laughs> Stop what you're doing or we're going to destroy you. Finally, somebody stood up. But that arena was not because there was a desire to destroy, but to bring a new awakening. There are people in poverty. Do you realize that there's 28 million people in North Korea? That's a lot of people in that little place. A lot. 90% of them are starving. Or in labor camps with no hope except for the revivals that they have. Korean people pray hard. Korean people, Christians, pray hard. They're warriors, man. And they are worshipers. Believe me, I've been with them. Ephesians 3, and we'll close here. Ephesians 3, verse 14. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in you, in your hearts through what? Faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church 
by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And amen. Again, one of the things is, if you're not willing to go all the way in worship, are you willing to go all the way in anything that he tells us to do? In fact, there's some things he hasn't even given to individuals that it's an assignment because he knows that they won't finish them. So I encourage you, press all the way through. Don't give up. Make contact. Ask for it. Lord, reconnect me today to your presence, your power, your love. Grant me new awakenings. Ask him. He will not deny you if you've worshipped him and sought him with all of your heart. Does everybody understand that? And expect it. Expect it. Because what you sow is what you what? Reap. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I thank you, Lord, that revelation through your word has been imparted and illumination has been seen so that we desire a new awakening, a new one, Lord. Now, I pray blessing over each and every one. I ask that you visit them and give them, release that revelation of a new awakening that they may know the essence of you as Father, as Creator, as King, Lord, and the <laughs> Commander of the military. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>